edition of Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire, Dick Lutz. With Mike Morin, it's week two of our second ladder series of the season. Last week, we saw Chris Bovair defeat Mike Robidoux as Chris Bovair tries to do what Mike Poulin did in our first ladder series. That's right, and for those who may have missed it, Mike uh, Poulin went from number five to number one, something that hasn't happened for a couple of years. So Chris Bovair, starting in the number five seed, hopes to make it two weeks in a row with a win today over Scott Creighton. Let's meet this afternoon's bowlers. Our number five seed, last week's winner by a score of 367 to 299 over Mike Robidoux, Chris Bovair from Lita Lanes here in Nashua. Right, Dick. These bowlers are very evenly matched on paper anyway, beginning with Chris Bovair, an average of 122, his high single, 193. 460 is Chris's high triple. It bowls in a couple of different bowling centers, Lita Lanes, of course, where we are, and the Academy Bowling Center in Haverhill, Massachusetts. And Chris earned $125 in bonus money in addition to advancing with his win last week, and he will take on our number three seed, Scott Creighton from Weymouth, Massachusetts. Scott Creighton's last visit here, Dick, was back in, uh, I think it was March of 1998, coming in with an average of 120. His high single is 192. Uh, Scott's high triple is 455, and he bowls at the Hanover Bowlerdrome. And again, his stats are very similar to Chris's, so at least on paper, this shapes up to be a very close match. Scott had a 653 in the roll-off to earn his number three seed. It's Chris Bovair and Scott Creighton. We're going to get right to it when we come back to Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire for Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. We'll be right back after this. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is brought to you in part by Ivers and Ford. Ready to go with our second match of this second ladder series. Chris Bovair dispatched Mike Robidoux last week. He moves up the ladder and takes on Scott Creighton, our number three seed with Mike Morgan and Steve Plant waiting in the wings. And Chris Bovair will be first to bowl here this afternoon at Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Chris winning last week 367 to 299 over young Mike Robidoux. And the first ball of this match misses the head pin. I say young Mike Robidoux, not that Chris Bovair is an old man <laughs> yeah. himself. He's only 23 years old. Mike Robidoux, his opponent last week, was just 18 years old. Scott Creighton must feel like an old man. He's all of 35. And how's that supposed to make us feel? Chris opens with an eight box. All I know is I'm old enough to be their brother. Whose brother? These guys. Chris Bovair misses the head pin again. Second box in a row. Once again in this match, we will continue to read the cards and letters you've been sending us. We encourage your mail. We'd love to hear from you. Our mailing address is Candlepin Stars and Strikes. WNDS TV 50 Television Place, Derry, New Hampshire, 03038. And Tony Brenner from Milford, Massachusetts writes a nice card. These are the kind of cards you like to get. As Chris Bovier opens with a pair of eights. And here is Scott Creighton for the first time in this match and the last time he was on it was back in March of 98 he lost to Bob Whitcomb 409 to 355 who is with him today by the way <laughs> giving him a little support there's a nice start Tony Brenner from Milford writes hi Dick I've never been a fan of bowling how's that to start the card well not a good start I hope it gets better that is until I've watched your show about nine months ago now I'm hooked both days I watch it from Milford Massachusetts as Scott Creighton will get it on the rebound. Uh -huh. Scott liked that one. Watch <laughs> it one more time. Scott played the wood, missed the shot, and it came back and grabbed the, the ten pin. So he opens with a spare. Now he fills the spare. Misses the head pin, but gets pretty good action. Puts six in the spare. Mr. Brenner, thank you very much for that nice card. Milford Massey writes is about 12 miles from the Rhode Island border. We know where it is and appreciate your watching. Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Milford as Scott that time put the ball where it he thought he was going to make the shot and didn't make it. We have $625 in our triple strike jackpot. 
$60 in the bonus ball contest after the match as we pick a card from those that have been sent in by you over the course of weeks. And again, you can participate by sending your postcard with your name, address, and how many pins you think our winning bowler will knock down with one shot after the match and send it to Lita Lanes, 340 Amherst Street, Nashua, 03063. What we'll was the guess? winner? Two. I guess last, last week was week. two. Not a lot of faith in our winning bowler. <laughs> Chris missed the spare. By the way, speaking of Lita Lanes, roll-offs are ongoing during the course of the season for you to win an opportunity to bowl on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. And you can find out more by calling Ray Simino, Sean Howard, or any of the staff here at Lita Lanes. You might get Chris Bovier on the phone when you call. The phone number in Nashua is 603-889-4884, 603-889-4884 for Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. And who knows, maybe one day we'll see you on a Candlepin Stars and Strikes show here on WNDS-TV. Chris Bovair is uh, probably much happier to be bowling as opposed to keeping score, which is his normal role for our bowling tapings. He's our official in-house scorekeeper for the fans here that can't see the television monitors that you get to see at home. But he's also a very accomplished bowler, and this is maybe your first look at him. And he takes a seven box. We talk about the youngsters bowling. We had uh, two youngsters last week in Mike Robidoux and Sean Howe and, uh, and Chris Bovair. And uh, Robidoux being 18 and Chris now 23, started bowling when he was 18. He started bowling, his first TV appearance was when he was 18. He started bowling long before that as Scott Creighton throws a strike. And you'll watch it one more time. I was out shopping with my wife a while back in Bedford, and a young man came up to me in the store. He couldn't have been more than 13 years old. He looked at me and said, aren't you the guy from the bowling show? He watches each and every week. His name was Mark Miller from Nashua. Bowls here at Lita Lanes. And uh, it was really exciting for me to think that there is a young man who is into candlepin bowling and probably has friends that mm -hmm. are into candlepin bowling, and so bowling lives among the young, and it's it's really nice to see. And see, Dick, you are a role model, so I hope you were behaving yourself in the store. You never know who's watching you. You never know. You always have to be on your best behavior. It's like you go into a restaurant, you know, you got to chew with your mouth closed, and you got to use the right fork, because people know who you are. Twenty-two pin lead early in the match. Well, there's a home field advantage in many sports. Is there a home lane advantage? Do you think, Dick, in well, candle pin bowling? I think there must be. I really do. Every lane has its has a nuance or an idiosyncrasy, if you will. And who would know better than Chris Bovair, who works here on the machines and helps keep the lanes dressed? Chris gets his first mark of the match. Scott Creighton from the other side of the world in Weymouth, Massachusetts. He is a full-time lobsterman. I think he's our only lobsterman of our many bowlers that we see regularly. Have we told him how much we love lobster? <laughs> Last year's Tournament of Champions winner, Rich Clark, of course, has Clark's Farm in Bedford. Right. And he was kind enough to bring in vegetables and produce for yeah, he our brought crew. Us pansies in the spring. The ball comes back on the deck, but doesn't do any damage. I think the least Scott could do would bring a couple of two-pounders for both of us. I couldn't agree more. 60 for Chris Bovair through six boxes. Scott Creighton. 55 through four. We can't see his footwork on this shot, but he takes three very, very short steps. Maybe we can ISO on his footwork in one of these times coming up, guys, and it's a very unusual approach with the footwork that 
Scott has going to the line. He's maybe three and a half feet from the foul line and takes very short steps. And that time he missed the spare. There you go. You can see how close he's. A couple of real short steps sliding to the line. A nine box. It all goes back to how we were taught as children by our parents or friends when we first started bowling. Usually it's the way you learn. You don't really change that much over the course of your life. Whether it's good or bad, you learn to adapt. On the head pin, and he breaks up the split. So he has a spare opportunity here with the four pins still standing. Scott with two marks in the string thus far, and Chris Beauvert with one spare. And looks like he threw it past that he did. Kind of pulled up at the line instead of staying with the shot. Another great crowd on hand at Lita Lanes, as you see in the background. Nine box for Scott Creighton. And a 13 pin lead. With four boxes remaining in the first string. Of this second match of the second ladder series. Mike Poulin has a berth in the Tournament of Champions at the end of the year. Who will join him? Chris Bobear on the head pin. The six pin wobbles, but still stands. The three pins in front of that, the wood behind it should not be a factor. Missed the spare. Picked the uh, three right off the six. It's a game of not inches, but millimeters. Ten box for Chris Bover. A lot of these bowlers will be heading up to Canada this week, actually, for the World uh, Tournament, which takes place every year. It's about a week long, and it's a great international event. Been doing it a couple times. A lot of balls. A strike for Chris Bover as he buried it in the one-three pocket. His first strike of the match, no doubt about that one. That was a perfect ball, and you'll get to see it again right in the one-three. There it is, and there they go. Well, that was quick. Four pin last to go. First strike for Bover. He has two marks, as does Scott Creighton. Scott tries to answer. There they go. The pins continue to move around. The wood is good for Scott in this situation right here. He must hit the two pin, which is the object pin right here. And he did, and there they go. A spare for Scott Creighton. As he from, the, from the outside as opposed to hitting between the two and the four. I don't know if that's how he tried it do it on purpose but it worked out the seven pin was last to go and he's got his third mark of this match that time he missed the head pin four horsemen on the right side still standing there is some wood that will help Scott six pins in the spare missed the head pin Boy, not by much though May I suggest if you're planning to go out for lunch or dinner this afternoon or this evening that you consider the Kahala Chinese Restaurant and Lounge on Amherst Street in Nashville, right next door to Lita Lane's, a terrific luncheon and dinner buffet. The lunch buffet is Monday through Saturday, 11.45 to 2, the dinner buffet, Thursday from 5 to 8, Sunday from noon to 8 at the Kahala Chinese Restaurant and Lounge. As Chris Bobier works on a strike, right on the head pin, breaks up the split. Leaves himself a spare opportunity as he looks for some bonus money. The Kahala has a terrific luncheon buffet, as we mentioned. They also have wonderful Chinese specials, some chef's selections that are new to the menu as Chris Bovert misses the spare. You can try the house special war bar, which combines chunks, chunks of lobster meat, chicken, shrimp, and roast pork mixed with a special Chinese vegetable mushrooms, bamboo shoots, water chestnuts in a delicious sauce served over a sizzling hot platter. That's one of the specialties at the Kahala. So the next time you're in Nashua, whether it's for shopping or you're bowling at Lita Lane, stop at the Kahala Chinese Restaurant and Lounge right next door to Lita Lane's in Nashua, New Hampshire. There's 
is Chris Bovair. His second strike in three boxes. Watch it again. This one wasn't as picturesque as the first one. But it goes into the scorebook as a strike nonetheless. He is at 109 with a couple of balls. <laughs> Grab the head pin going by. He is at 115. One seventeen for Chris Bovair in the first string. Pretty close to how he started last week, Dick, when he had one sixteen, but he continued to improve with one twenty five and one twenty six in his closing strings last week. Now Scott Creighton on the head pin. Well, he doesn't even need a mark to win. A couple of 10 boxes would give him 118. But he's got a, an opportunity here to put a mark on the board. That's not good wood either. That's more of a deflector. He didn't use it, took it straight on and picked up the spare. So Scott will take the lead into the second string. The question is, how big will that lead be? On the head pin. Another spare opportunity for Scott. He's been a little inconsistent with where he's been hitting on his first shot, but he's been getting some real good pin action. Some good mixing off the boards, the sidewalls. How will he play this? He will not get the spare. He's at 123. 124 first string for Scott Creighton, a seven pin lead over Chris Bovair as we move to string number two of this second round match as Candlepin Stars and Strikes continues from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire on WNDS TV. <laughs> Scott Creighton who moves to lane 34. To start us off with our second string, he takes a seven pin lead into the middle string of this three string match with Chris Bovair. 124 for Creighton, 117 for Bovair. Creighton starts the second string again on the head pin, but the five, nine, and ten still stand. As Mike mentioned in the first string, Scott is a full-time lobsterman. Ooh, almost picked up the spare. He works out of Quincy, hopes to have his own rig and business someday, and I'm fascinated by what he lists as a hobby. Saltwater fishing mm -hmm. is a hobby for a lobsterman. That one was in the gutter. That one won't count. That'll be a nine box for Scott Creighton to start out the third string. I think the lobster business is, uh, at least if you can believe what you read in the paper, doing very well, especially uh, Cape Ann, New Hampshire and uh, the main areas. Not sure how it is down where Scott does his uh, lobstering. One of the articles I read said that a lot of people around the world are ordering lobster now and freezing it, getting ready for New Year's celebrations mm. to welcome in the, the millennium. There's a nice shot wow. by Scott Creighton. That's a beauty. Well done by Scott. And a mark for Creighton in the second box. Now Chris Bovair tries to answer. Missed the head pin, but he'll have an opportunity here. One, two, four, nine. Well, he put it right where he wanted to, just didn't get a break. So our runner-up today will uh, take home $175, and the winner, his prize, is Mike Morgan. Next week. Mike you Morgan and a $50 gift certificate. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Dave Roby, thank you. Actually, it's usually a two-for-one. Usually you get Mike Morgan and, uh, and Brother Tom coaching, or sometimes it's the other way around. 
So look for the Morgans much in evidence next week on our show. Well, he missed the head pin, but got a little bit of a break and actually has a makeable shot. Not an easy shot, but a makeable shot. The wood will not hurt him. Whether it helps him remains to be seen. Yeah, Had to hit the head pin. Missed the object pin. And that's an eight box. So now Scott Creighton comes to the line working on a mark. A chance to pad his lead and pursue some bonus money. We've not given away any bonus money in this match. Last week, Chris Bovair in defeating Mike Billadou earned himself $125 in bonus money. Right on the head pin, but can't break up the split. But there is some wood, and the wood is angled in a fashion that will make this shot doable. This will be a great shot if it goes. There it is. Nice spare for Scott Creighton. He played the wood perfectly. That's a beautiful shot. And Scott has two marks in a row, and you're going to get to see it again. He put the ball right on the money. There it is, and the wood slid over perfectly to pick up the spare for Scott. Now he goes after some bonus money. He'll put seven in the spare, and he has still standing the two, four, seven with some wood on the deck. Wants to hit the two pin on the left hand side. Use that dead wood. Watch out, it's not over yet. It is not going to fall. The seven pin stands. It ain't over till it's over, as Yogi once said, and that one almost went. Ten bucks. Well. 53 through four for Scott. And Chris Bovair has his work cut out for him now as uh, Scott's putting uh, Chris's feet to the fire here as Chris has yet to mark this game. That time he's on the head pin. Well, he's got some wood that really will help him here. This looks like it's a makeable shot with the wood set up. It's a double piece of wood, which is always scary. But the way it's angled this time, it looks like it's a makeable shot. I'm worried about that front wood deflecting off of the back sure. wood and away from the 10 pin. We'll see what happens as Chris Bovair goes after the spare. How do three pieces of wood and two other standing pieces completely miss another pin on the deck? It happens. The nine pin, and he misses that. Still stands. So Chris is in danger of falling into a significant hole here in the middle of the match. He needs to start putting a couple of marks together. The hometown favorite from Nashua on his home lanes, Lita lanes, in the pocket that time. The solid five pin did not move at all. That was a beautiful shot. Executed nicely right in the 1-3 pocket. Great follow through. The mark for Chris Bovair as we go to the break. He needed it that time, and he got it. He'll try to get a little bit closer. When we come back, Scott Creighton will be on the line as we continue with Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire on WNDS-TV. Scott Creighton ready to go. Lane 34 at Lita Lanes, and... He has 53 through four boxes with a couple of spares thus far in this string. Chris Bovair will be working on a spare when he steps to the line after Scott. Right in the pocket that time, the five, eight, and nine still standing in the middle of the alley. Scott's been bowling 29 years. He's 35 years old. You do the arithmetic. That time he gets the spare. Got at the back door, but it counts. That difference in this game for Scott Creighton as he's hitting the head pin almost every time on his first shot. He grabbed it that time too, and the pins yep. continue to move around. 
He's leaving very makeable spares. And well, the three pin moved about three inches in front of the six. Which actually makes it a little bit easier. <laughs> and it went around. It well, just kicked it right around it. How about that? I'm sure he's just as surprised. And he'll take a 10 box. Now Chris Bovair tries to put a little bit of a run here, working on a spare. The homegrown favorite puts a half Worcester in the spare. Graduate of Merrimack High School, the town which is just north of Nashua, if you're not familiar with New Hampshire geography. He put it on the head pin that time. Well, you need more than deuces in the spares to start a comeback. And that will be an eight box for Chris Bovair. Got a lot of supporters, got a lot of friends and family here today. Cheering him on, but he's in a big hole. 35 pins through frames completed. Nice note from oh, Mrs. L. Johnson from Maynard, Massachusetts. Eighty-two years young. Used to bowl a lot when she was younger and watches the show religiously week after week, both on Saturday and Sunday. Mrs. Johnson, thank you very much for writing in. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, and I'll bet she bowled at Kelly's and Maynard before they closed down about uh, 12, 13 years ago. Nice out for Chris Bovier from a difficult situation. He puts an eight box up. Thirty four pin lead in the match now for Scott Creighton as he's added twenty seven pins this game alone that time he missed the head pin. Scott's only left one pin standing and that was in the first frame when he had a nine box. Watch out. No oh, it just went by that ten pin in the corner. Continues his trend of pinning very nicely. 91 through seven frames. Pulling much more consistently this game. There's a nice break. Way off the head pin, leaving only the one and the two. Frozen Which isn't one. easy to do. You couldn't do that if you tried. No. And I do try all the time, by the way. <laughs> And a mark for Scott in the eighth frame. <laughs> Harry Wilson from Paxton, Massachusetts writes in. Talking about, here's a, uh, the timing of this is perfect because he writes about the half Worcester. And he says, for a long time I've been going to write, maybe I should be writing the physics department at UNH concerning the ease with which the half Worcester can be punched out when all the pins are up. But if only those two pins are standing alone, it's almost impossible to pull off. Very good point. And it's definitely a problem for a physics professor. <laughs> Writes Harry Wilson of Paxton, Massachusetts. And he also says, who will ever forget the come from behind win of Hawk Hallis over Joe Ashline? If I'm not mistaken, Joe hasn't been on the show since then. Am I correct? You are correct. Yeah, and it was correct. quite a comeback that Hawk Hallis had coming from some 60 pins down in the right. third string. And he did that inside of eight frames. It wasn't over the course of the whole game. Correct. His last eight frames, he came back from 60 plus pins. Sorry, Joe. Well, uh, Chris Bovair has in his last four frames started with two, one, two, and now three. 
not giving himself some great opportunities no. to make spares. And that time, that one got away from him. His uh, rhythm is, is totally thrown off for whatever reason. He's not out of it, though. This is only the second string. And he is more than capable of really heating things up. I know, because I've seen him. a bowl for years. Tough seven box for Chris Bovier. In addition to advancing to meet Mike, Mike Morgan next week, our winner today receives a $50 gift certificate to Haverhill Beef Company at 117 Merrimack Street in Haverhill. I'll give you the phone number, especially with the holidays coming up, 978-374-4795. Again, Haverhill Beef at 978-374-4795, along with the great selection of what you'd expect there. Also, ready-to-eat meals are also available for today's very busy people. A full-service, old-fashioned meat shop. Haverhill Beef as Scott Creighton. Adds to his lead over Chris Bovere. Here at Lita Lanes. Scott has found the mark. He's on the head pin almost every time. This is a shot that Chris Bovere made not once but twice last week. Second time after I said he wouldn't make it. I wasn't going to bring that up. <laughs> I told Chris after the match what I had said and <laughs> to watch for it when he watches the tape. Is that what those red marks are on your neck, Dick? <laughs> An eight box. A 132 string for Scott Creighton. Chris Bovier needs a couple of marks to finish this spring. I mean, look what he gets for his effort. So there it is again, right on the head pin. Two, one, two, three, and two. His first balls in the second half of this game, making it nearly impossible to come up with spare leaves. He's going to need a mark in the final frame to reach 90. Wow. That's a four box. Seventy five through nine for Chris Bovere. This is out of character for Chris. On the head pin. The bucket, the dinner bucket. Three, five, six and nine. Nice spare for Chris Bovier and a round of applause from his fans here at Lita Lanes. He's just relieved more than anything else. Couldn't quite coax a smile out of maybe a strike here would get a bit of reaction. Needs five to reach 90. And he'll put an eight in the spare and finish with a 93 in the second string. A 46 pin lead for Scott Creighton as we go to the third and deciding string of this second round match on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. We're back to Lita Lanes right after this. Well, Chris Bovier has his work cut out for him as we begin our third string in this second round match on Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Lita Lanes in Nashville. He trails Scott Creighton by 46 pins. Dick Lutz with Mike Morin. Our entire WNDS team crew from Lita Lanes as Chris put it on the head pin that time to start out. Didn't get a break. Has a split here. Needs to run some marks together here to get back into the match. We've seen it done before, Michael. Yeah, as evidenced by the letter you just shared with us a couple of moments ago. Missed the spare. Gave it a ride. Couldn't quite convert. And about this point, you start talking to yourself. Say, so what do you have to do to get a mark? Our WNDS-TV crew working here at Lita Lanes this week. Our director is Ken Knight, working on audio Dave Hand. 
The tape machine is manned by Dave McCarthy on graphics Lisa Law. The video is handled by Larry Taylor. There's a strike by Chris Bovair. And all of the action that you're watching is being captured by our cameraman Bob Dold, Ryan Talbot, and Jim McLean. And you get to watch all of the action each and every week here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. Here's Scott on the line missing the headpin. One of his rare headpin misses in this match. He's on the head pin and he converts a very difficult spare. A terrific shot by Scott Creighton. Watch it one more time. He caught the head pin and cleaned up the six pins that were standing for the spare to start the third string. Now he fills the spare with a seven. This one, however, is not quite as easy. Well, you got the five, the eight, and ten. A piece of cake. Well, for you, for Boulder, if you're. Uh, Accomplishments, yes. Ooh, he almost made it. Nice shot. Nice try. You talk like you think you can beat me. Here's a 10. <laughs> now, Chris Beauvais working on a strike. He needs several marks back to back to back. Got the head pin, broke up a split. Tough shot, but makeable here. Crowd is getting ever rowdier now as Chris is starting to show signs of life once again after a, a dreadful second strike. Needs to hit the object pin, went by it. Well, he's gained one pin back so far. Of the 46, he was down. A nine box. Needs more than that. Needs to mark. Really needs to mark badly to get back into it. He's uh, showing a little bit more aggressiveness on his first shot. Well, Sometimes that's the payoff. Broke up the spread eagle. Yeah. There's a piece of wood standing there to the left, now rolling away from the two pin. He might still try to play that wood as it rolls backward. Well, tough decision here for Chris Bovair. See what he tries to do. Here he goes. Well, he just cut it. Missed the, got just a piece of the dead wood and didn't really help him at all. And another nine box for Chris. He's at 46 through four. Scott Creighton took a 46 pin lead into the third string. Tries to add to that. He's got the seven and the 10 standing with some wood in the middle of the deck. Well, this is one of those prayer shots. You throw the ball down there and you say a prayer while it's on its way. And his prayer is not answered right there. Gave it a shot. And that'll be a 10 box. So he'll add a pin. Actually, they're even in this string through three boxes. And Chris Bovier put a nine box up in his fourth frame, and let's see what Scott does. Scott would be happy to match Chris box for box the rest of the way. Scott sizing up the situation, waiting for the wood to stop on the deck and trying to figure out his options. As the wood rolls off the deck and into the left gutter. Nice oh, shot by yeah. Scott Creighton. 
perfect shot. Well done, a spare. We go to the break. We'll go to the break with you watching in the replay. As Scott Creighton takes the lead with six boxes remaining in this second round match, it's Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV. Chris Bovier trails by 47 pins plus a ball with six boxes remaining. And Chris is on lane 34, ready to go. That's a way to do it. As he well, tries to now, mount a comeback. Needs to string a few more together. One by itself isn't going to be nearly enough to get the job done. Now it crossed over a little bit, but he got great action. And gets the strike. Now he's on the head pin. When all is said and done, tough shot remains. Chris is trying to will yep. that piece of wood. I think it's in pretty good position, Dick. Now he's going to have to try and sweep it across, that's for sure. It's five, seven, and the eight with wood way off on the right side at a good angle. Here's the wood, nice. there's a spare. Back-to-back -back marks for Chris Bover. Watch it one more time. Played the wood perfectly, didn't he? Absolutely perfecto. Is he mounting a Boston Red Sox-like comeback is the question. Well, will Scott allow him to? That's the other question. <laughs> Scott working on a spare, puts eight in the spare. And the wood is not really of any much, much uh, consequence here with the one seven. The one seven, there it is, his second great spare in a row. What a shot. Scott Creighton, the shot maker, watch it again, played it perfectly. Looking for $50 in bonus money now. Scott Creighton on the head pin, the seven pin stand. So Chris Bovere puts a couple of marks back to back. to back, And what does Scott Creighton do? He matches a man some. This is a shot for $50 for Scott Creighton right here. He's got no choice but to go through the deadwood, which is about three feet in front. Oh, he played the wood on the side. side. Very good. Great shot. $50 in bonus money. Terrific shot by Scott Creighton, who's really made some great shots here over the last three boxes. Now Chris looks for some bonus money. Right in the pocket, and there's the five pin. It's been there before, and there it is again. Chris maintains a one pin lead in this game, but still down 45 with only four frames to go. He's got some frozen wood on the right hand side of the five pin, also known as the king pin. $50 in bonus money for Chris Bovere. Well, Chris isn't going to go quietly, that's for sure. Warming up to the occasion and putting the pressure on Scott Creighton, but Creighton has responded with three marks of his own. And they've been great marks, too, that he's made. Here's Bovere. The five pin goes. Nicely done. That's another $25 in bonus money. The five pin again was reluctant, but a piece of wood kicked it out. All right, well, Scott continue to respond as he has. Scott's working on three marks in a row. In the pocket, but look what's there. And But there's wood on the deck. And the wood is angled in such a way that it, Anything, well, that piece of wood's rolling out of, out of. Yeah, but the way he's been shooting today, Dick, this is a piece of cake for Scott, at least in the groove that he's found himself in. And that wood that rolled from left to right is going to start rolling back from right to left, and Scott would like that to come a little bit farther, but it's not going to. It looks like it's going to settle and we'd in like right him there. like to take the shot here before we run out of time. <laughs> it's only a 60 minute show, Scott. <laughs> Here's Scott looking for the spare. Not going to get it. All right, well, there's a few pins back now for Chris Bovere. Ten box for Scott.
up against the strike in the eighth frame. Posted by Chris Bovair. And Scott leaves himself a spare opportunity. Again, the wood is angled nicely for him. So despite Chris Bovair's best efforts, Scott Creighton isn't allowing him to get any closer. Here is another spare. So Scott responds with some great shot making, some clutch spares of his own. And Chris Bovair works on four marks in a row, tries to add to his bonus money. $625 in the triple strike jackpot. Every time he missed the head pin. Makeable shot if he hits the head pin. That's key, hitting the head pin. The rest want is academic. Don't hit it head on either side is probably going to get the job done, left or right. Missed it. All right, he took the head pin out the wrong way. That should probably just about do it. I think so, pretty much. But it was a nice comeback here, late for Chris Bovair. That'll be a nine box for Chris. He's at 132. <laughs> Needs a double strike here to stay alive. Even. That match is over. We'll have to wait and see if. Scott Creighton can add to his bonus money total when we finish up the match. As that will leave Chris open in the 10th frame. He's at 138 right now. A 141 final string for Chris Bovair and a three string total of 351. Scott Creighton's already at 367. Now let's see if he gets some bonus money. He will not in this frame add to it, so we will take a break. We'll come back to meet our bowlers as Scott Creighton will advance to round three of this latter series on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNBS TV. We're back to Lita Lanes in Nashville, New Hampshire, right after this. We're running short on time. Chris Bovier standing here with us. The final score, 392 to 351. Scott Creighton, the winner. Chris, a check for $175, $75 in bonus money. You become our official scorer once again here at Lita Lance. Right. Got my old job back. Thanks. Yeah. Nice to see Chris Bovier from Lita Lance. Now Scott Creighton is ready to bowl a bonus ball, and we'll try to match him up with a winner at home. And it is a five. And let's see if we've got Rita Dupuy from Fitchburg, Massachusetts, predicted seven. Not a winner, so she gets a consolation prize from NNR Trophies in Winchenden, Massachusetts. And ten free strings of bowling go to Frank Mahoney of Plasto, New Hampshire. Let's bring Scott right up here to us and say hi to Scott. Congratulations to you. Fifty dollars in bonus money, and you will advance to next week to take on second seeded Mike Morgan. And uh, you, you really were on a head pin this afternoon. I tried. You know, you bowl. And that's all you can do. Best you, know? you can do. We'll see you next week. Take on Mike Morgan. Scott Creighton, our winner here this afternoon. Up the Good ladder Scott. we go to number two, Mike yeah. Morgan. Mike Morgan, we were, had him on our show seven times last year. His first appearance for the brand new season. We hope to see you then. We we'll look forward to seeing you for Mike Morgan and our entire crew here at Lita Lanes. I'm Dick Lutz. Thanks for watching Candlepin Stars and Strikes. We'll see you next time, everybody. So long. Woo!